Today's podcast is sponsored by Microsoft's new podcast, Security Unlocked. Links down in the description below. And that was a very festive. Festive. Yeah. Was there music on top of it? Yeah. You, you don't ever get to hear that, though. That was made by our buddy Justin again for us. For very the nice. Holiday thing that we're about to do. Thank you, Justin. So, Paul, do you, do you know what happened last night? Some celestial thing. Yeah. So. Yeah. Some celestial thing. I didn't get to see it because it was cloudy here. Yeah, I didn't get to see it either. I could see a bunch of clouds. Uh, but Saturn and Jupiter were basically like on top of each other. Mm -hmm. um, basically. <laughs> but from our perspective. From our from our vantage yes. point, they yes. looked like they were on top of each other and, and formed like a superstar. Um, so we had, we had that going on. It was also the winter solstice. So today is the first day that we're stealing sunlight back from uh, the southern hemisphere. And thanks. I for noticed it was brighter this morning. Uh, anyways, so we've so so we've got the the Saturn and Jupiter aligning in the sky. We've got the winter mm -hmm. solstice. We have a pandemic, and the yep. Bengals also won on Monday Night Football. So all it takes for the Bengals to win on primetime television are an event that only happens once every eight hundred years, a pandemic, and a solstice, and then the Bengals can win on primetime television. Honestly, I think the four of those things combined is a sign of the apocalypse. Yeah, I think I think this is like <laughs> this is literally in the Bible. <laughs> oh, uh, the Bengals shall win on the field. <laughs> so, so the Bengals subreddit is going crazy because it's the Steelers, and we we hate the Steelers as does most yeah. of the NFL. I remember, the Steelers were uh, undefeated for quite a while. Yeah, yeah they went eleven and zero, really... and then they've lost three straight now, heading into the playoffs. Yeah. It's so so sad. So sad. Yeah. Um, but so the Bengals strategy after we started doing terrible and our quarterback lost his leg uh, to the to the Pirates was the Pirates. Yeah, well, <laughs> just getting his leg destroyed. Oh, I, I, right, right. Yeah. Losing it to scurvy um, mm -hmm. is then we we actually acquired another quarterback and he got hurt because we have no offensive line, and so mm -hmm. the guy they put it in is named Ryan Finley and he's been nicknamed Tank Commander Finley because they want the Bengals to tank so that we get a better draft oh, pick. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So there's all these memes of him like sitting in tanks because he needs to be a tank commander, except for this one game and like the the only game he needed to win. Yeah, all no, season. you have to beat Pittsburgh. Then you can just yeah. You can now we can go right back to a regularly tomorrow. scheduled programming of just being terrible, and and they did it on Monday Night say, Football, which is you know one of the weirder things for me moving to Pennsylvania is that we are uh, close to Philadelphia, with about an hour away. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're less than two hours to New York, so you would think most people in this area are Phillies fans, uh, Eagles fans, uh, New York team fans, and, and you do see that. But for some reason, my brother-in-law, inexplicably, is a Steelers fan, you know? Yeah, that's unfortunate. And uh, I will take great delight in writing him today that they lost to the Bengals. You should specifically mention Tank Commander Finley um, took down... Take Commander Finley. All right, I'll, I'll try. Uh, the other, the other hilarious part, for, and then we'll get back to whatever. Um, is there's an individual on uh, the Steelers called named uh, Juju Schuster or Smith Schuster, and he ha he's doing this dumb thing, and he got he he goes out like on like the the logo of the opposing team and does this stupid TikTok dance, and he got lit up. Like got just smeared into the ground by a Bengals player, and the Bengals. <laughs> Did they do a little? And, dance? and the Bengals Twitter accounts said Von Bell, who just laid him out, said Von Bell lays out anonymous TikTok star. <laughs> it's just him just getting smacked over and over and over again. Uh, well, you enjoy this one day, Brad. But this... Paul, it's all I've got. You know, okay. I, well, I'm you, trying to look all at you, got. you get Christmas in a couple of days. I mean. No, no, it's over. Like, we get getting our sunlight back from the Australians, and wow. we are – the Bengals <laughs> won the only game that matters. a lot of grievances here, right? Yeah. <laughs> it's just kind of laid bare. Yeah, well, we've got – now we've got college football playoffs, which we've got Ohio State in there, which I – even though as a Buckeyes fan, I'm not really sure they should have been in because they had a shortened season. Who should have been in there was UC, which is University of Cincinnati, who had a perfect season. Uh, but you they got – very Ohio-centric Ohio, uh, Ohio view of the world. Mm-hmm. Is this concerning to anybody? Is no, and funny? then the Browns are actually also doing decent. So, like, as a football region, yeah. um, mm -hmm. we'll have to be excited about, I guess, or something. I don't know. Okay. Well, 
<laughs> Jesus, dude. Uh, congratulations. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Uh, did you see the, the Reuters report about the Apple car, by the way? I did. How does it? So the quick recap here, folks, is that Reuters has come out and says Apple is building a car. Project mm-hmm. Titan is back on track or something. Uh, it's 2024 is when they're going to launch this thing. They have some special battery sauce, uh, which I assume means they throttle the engines as the car gets older to extend it. Um, <laughs> it's going to be nice. coming in 2024. And they, they seem confident that this is Apple's building a, building a car again. Uh- I would never recommend that you go and listen to the three hour long twit podcast that I was on Sunday night. However, uh, Steve Gibson's Steve Gibson said something amazingly smart and, um, mm-hmm. you know, surprise. He's an, he is amazingly smart, but I, this one really hit home for me. It was kind of interesting. <clears throat> he was, uh, I, I think it was him who told this story, but someone hit him or someone he knew was involved with automated driving technology research in the 1970s. And they worked on this for like 10 years. And the one thing they came out with was, this is impossible. It's never going to work. And it's not one of those things where technology improves and it's just going to work. He's like, this will never work. And we can, you can see it in all the automated car stuff that we, uh, you know, automated driving stuff. And, um, that, but what he said that was just so amazing was we're basically going after the wrong problem. We can't, given the current infrastructure with the roads, the way they are and people around and the erratic nature of things, we're never going to be able to create self-driving cars that, that work. They can't, it's not going to ever going to be safe. But we're going after the wrong problem. We shouldn't be trying to automate the cars. We should be automating the streets. And he's like, well, what we need is something in the street that is mm-hmm. the guide, the lane for these cars. Like if you do, if you make that change, then we can create self-driving cars very easily. And uh, I thought that was kind of genius. And that's maybe where the money should be going. And um, if you think about it, and you know I love trains, <laughs> it would make cars a little bit more like trains, you mm-hmm. know? more technological, uh, you know, and individual, but more like trains. And uh, I think we can agree everything that's more like a train is better. <laughs> is my point. Yeah. No? I don't know. Yeah. You know, well, there's a lot of companies trying to figure out that problem. A lot. Because yep. they all... And all, all of them are failing. <laughs> yeah, so, I mean, it's... You know, it's the problem. I think they, what do they call it? Level five, which is where you can truly just get in, press the button, take a nap, and you wake up at your destination is, um, yeah. there is a thing like that. It's called a train. <laughs> See, that that's, no, I mean, I'm serious. Yeah, like, what it is. It's, it's attainable, but you need to fix the roads. That's a, it's a simple solution and it would work, you know. You know what the most dangerous part of a train is, Paul? No, Brad. It's where the cars cross the train track. Right. Because people, again, you know, right, it's just it's always people. the human factor, right? You can build this Tesla thing that can drive itself, and it's great. But the guy's sitting there, leaned back in his chair, he did a thing of nachos on his chest, watching a movie. And, uh, you know, I'm sorry, but, like, one of the things I know as a, you know, lifelong driver is, like, paying attention is key. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and uh, it's one of the reasons, it's one of the reasons, it's not the only reason, but, you know, kind of an old school thing. Like, I really like stick shifts, you know? Oh, yeah, so do I. And one of the reasons for that is that... Um, you know, it forces you to be more engaged. And by the way, you know, just a really random side note, I, just, I will just never forget this conversation. We were in Ireland with friends. We had to rent a uh, an automatic drive vehicle because one of those guys that was going to be driving couldn't drive a stick. And I was saying to the other guy, I, you know, I really, really prefer to have a stick, especially when you're driving on the other side of the road. And he's like, what do you mean? And I'm like, well, if you think about it, you're shifting with your other hand. It, it forces you to really engage and pay attention because mm-hmm. it's really easy to drive on the wrong side of the road when you're not used to it. And if you're in automatic, you know, you'll just yeah. do that automatically, you know. And and he was like, oh, actually, that's a really good point. And it's like, well, yeah, I mean, I, I think paying attention, if you're going to be driving in any capacity, attention is, is like the most important, well, beyond basic dexterity, I guess, <laughs> um, you know, the most mm-hmm. important thing. Other important things involved. Oh, uh, oh, there we go. Hold on. Other important things involved. Checking out the new Security Unlocked podcast by my friends over at Microsoft named Nick and Natalia, where they explore the latest innovations in threat intelligence, security research, and data science with a special focus on demystifying artificial intelligence and machine learning. Check out the link in those delicious descriptions below that I write every day. Well, ring the bell and whatnot. <laughs> no, Von Bell. Wrong. Uh, Juju's bell. That's how it works. You are really taken with this oh it's just paul i don't have a lot of bangles like highlights in my I'm surprised life surprised you have any sorry 
I don't have many, but last night was a, a rare, a rare occurrence of being able to watch football and enjoy I, football. I paid no attention to this game because like the rest of the country, I assumed that the Steelers were going to defeat you infinity points to three or something. But of course, um, I don't blame you. Yeah. No, this kind of upset is always interesting. Yep. Yep. Almost or as upsetting, interesting, I guess, depending oh. on who you are. Almost as interesting as Adobe brings Premiere Pro to the M1 Max, I guess. Actually, I might actually vaguely be interested to see what the benchmarking looks like compared to like my PC. Honestly, this one is really early on; it's in beta, and I I don't I'm not inf- intimately familiar with Premiere Pro, but it's like Adobe Photoshop. It's a humongous application mm-hmm. with lots of modules, some third party components. There's a lot that goes into it. So this one's just in beta. It's a, a subset of the full functionality. They have a list of you know what works, what doesn't, some known issues, etc. Obviously, they're going to improve it over time, and obviously, you can continue using the normal version of the app with Rosetta 2 or whatever it's called, so whatever. But, you know, I, I, the interesting thing to me here, of course, is Microsoft released Windows 10 on like three years ago. Nothing from anybody, you know, as far as apps converted over. Nothing. Lots of talk about Adobe, not a lot mm-hmm. of action. And then Apple releases the they, – God, they announced it in November. They yeah. announced it in November. It's out. There's three computers. Adobe has uh, already transitioned the all of the key apps in their CC suite. You know? Which makes you question a couple things. Is it one, that Adobe just doesn't care about Windows and ARM? Plausible. No. Plausible. Is it that Apple had better tooling to make it no. That's easier? A, uh, I, don't, I wonder. Hmm. Or I don't third, know. is it App, Adobe knows that they have to do this because Apple's going all in on this and they have no other choice? All right, so I, I think all three are a possible mm-hmm. hit. Um, the first one, I mean, not caring about Windows 10 on ARM. I mean, the real way to put that is Windows 10 on ARM is just, it, it's a sub 1% of the market. It's not even, it's not even probably, probably 0.1%. So, you know, someone on Twitter had said, you know, how come Adobe is so quick to do this, but they, you know, hate Windows 10 on ARM or whatever. And it's like, there are already more M1-based Macs in the world than there are Windows 10 on ARM devices. I'm sorry, like, that's a fact. Um, these things don't sell. So it's kind of a chicken egg thing. Mm. I, the nice thing is b- because Apple has done what it's done, Adobe is working on ARM ports on the Windows side as well. And we see that actually with uh, what Photoshop and Lightroom are both available on Windows and on ARM all of a sudden. So that's neat. I mean, it's, uh, well, we'll probably, actually, I can't say this. I was going to say we'll probably see Premiere Pro, but when you think about it, Premiere Pro is a pretty heavy-duty application, and it's exactly the type of thing no one would ever do on Windows 10 on ARM, mm-hmm. um, other than as a side thing. Like, no one, no video editor is ever going to buy one of these devices ever, not unless they really, really improved over time. Whereas, you know, the M1-based Macs, people have made a case. Like, you can do this, and it's actually in some ways more efficient than the Intel versions with as far as rendering speed or whatever. So, um, you know, they're smart, Adobe, to... Uh, to be doing what they're doing, but it's understandable why it would upset Windows guys. Sorry, Windows guys. Yeah, we are. We are too. Actually, my wife. The so, I, so following our conversation yesterday where I started putting up blinds, my wife has decided uh, yesterday, like three o'clock, that she's going to completely reorganize the kitchen, which is fine. No, no qualms about all this. This is great. This is things that need to happen. And she's way better at that than I am. But she found this thermos. Like, it's a huge thermos that says, I love Windows Phone on it, which we all know how long that's been in our kitchen. And she's like, I'm going to throw this out. And I said, eh. And she puts it next to my scotch. <laughs> she goes, that's where it stays. It's your problem now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Well, when you said Windows, guys, that's reminded me of all those fine folks who fell on. You know. I understand the reactions. You know, we've been smacked in the face so many times. We're getting a little gun shy here. Like, um. A little, uh, a little upset about things. It's, it's, you know, it's understandable. Yeah, maybe Microsoft will build a car. That'll be the next rumor. You know, if Microsoft could just build a car, they could, uh, you know, suddenly be a consumer or something, something again. I don't know. That's why they're building that ARM chip, Paul, to put it in their car. Just for the car, yeah, it's a secret. That's the secret. That's the next wave of computing. But something thing. better than a Titan. Apple's got Project Titan. They've got Project, like, Gundam or something. I don't know. Project Dum Dum. Kid is singing right above us. Oh, did the movie come to a close yesterday? It did, but fortunately for me, there's Crudes one and two are on Netflix or Hulu or whatever. Oh, so this is like the third one. Yeah. 
Yeah. Well, you can rediscover the wonder of the first two. Yeah, something like that. So anyways, today's podcast is brought to you by Security Unlocked. You can find links down in the description below or go to aka.ms slash security unlocked.